Game five. Now gets Timberwolves, Knicks, Pacers. Oh, Woody Page is here. You will be there tonight, Woody. That there's a there to be there at is something you did not. You said it was over. Oh, no, Woody. Uh -oh. You said it was over. Going the wrong way. Yeah. Also, Ranger Danger, Goff paid, and opening night in the WNBA, Caitlin Clark's debut, and the Aces quest for three-peat. Let's go around the horn. A Thunder comeback and evening up with the Mavs. The final nine minutes, Shea Gilgis Alexander had a takeover. Dallas' free throws in this game were atrocious. And correct me if I'm wrong, it feels like for the 10th game this postseason, Doncic and Irving. Yet to play good basketball simultaneously. George Sedano around the horn to you. What's going on with Kyrie and Luca? And is that what's deciding the series? Tony, it's partially what's deciding the series. Luca's injuries are real. I think the knee and the ankle are clearly bothering him. And it's a lot of your turn, my turn with Kyrie. The usage thing with Luca has been an issue all season long between those two. But to me, this is about the Oklahoma City Thunder. And, well, I know they're the one seed, but and they may not be the championship team this year, but they are clearly here and to be reckoned with moving forward. And this last game, to me, is a clear sign of that because a young team, most young teams would have folded in that scenario against a veteran squad on the road. They did not. Shea Gilgis-Alexander was fantastic. And give Mark Degnall a lot of credit for taking out Josh Giddy, who had been struggling, putting in Kaysen Wallace, who did a phenomenal job defensively against Kyrie Irving. So I, I think this is about Oklahoma City more so than it is about Dallas. Kevin, I saw you shaking your head when George brought up the growth that he saw from OKC last night. What was that about? The one seed is maturing in front of our eyes, but not towards the championship. What's going on? What does that take, George? This was not about life lessons. This was about free throws. 12 of 23 for the Mavericks, mm. 23 of 24 for mm. the Thunder. According to Optus Sports, that's the biggest disparity in free throw percentage ever in a playoff game. That's what matters. Wow. I was impressed by some of the Thunder's play. Uh, the Mavericks were great at rim protection, and yet the, the Thunder were able to find creative angles in the basket, going outside a little more. I like the maturity, I like the growth, but this was about the Mavericks not drilling down in the fundamentals. David Dennis Jr., how would you see it? Mm. Well, let's talk about the flip side of that, which is the OKC Thunder drilling down the fundamentals. 23 of 24 from the free throw line, which is a veteran-type performance from a young team that looked like they were dead in the water in that first half. And they, the way that closed the game, they closed out that game was a, was a veteran-style performance. Holmgren only allowing one for 14 when he's defending somebody. Mm. The way that SGA was down the stretch, 20 of 30 points, those final 30 points he either scored or assisted on. This OKC Thunder team defense has not allowed 100 points in any game they've won in the postseason. They're holding Kyrie to 15 points on 12 shots. These things are what they did during that regular season when they were the one seed, and they are continuing that. This is a veteran team forming before our eyes. Mm -hmm. All right, I appreciate the representation then. If everyone thinks it's about OKC, what do you could start there? Am I wrong in thinking that Doncic and Irving haven't had a game together where they both played well and we get to see what their potential is yet? Yeah, they got to get their act together, and I mean that literally. That what they're doing is on, they're on opposite sides of courts. So they're not paying attention to each other, and they're averaging 22.5 points lower than they yeah. did in the regular season. When you've got Irving going for single digits in two games in this series, and you've got the leading scorer in the league that actually has more turnovers than he does. Much he enjoyed being back in Cleveland, and that was a shot across the bow to the Lakers. He wore the Knicks towel after the Knicks game because he was upset because the trade deadline was coming and the Lakers looked like they weren't going to make a move. This happens all the time. This is just what LeBron James does. He's as strategic and calculated a player as, as we have in sports, and he does things to nudge people. But I don't think this matters because Cleveland doesn't have caps. But what is even the strategy there, there last night? That's where I'm at a loss. We know he's a free agent. The Lakers know they need to make moves. This is not David Dennis Jr., please, in, in terms of this conversation. 
Tony, you're just not paying attention to your calendar here. Happy New Year. It's the beginning. It's the season premiere of the LeBron James Passive Aggressiveness Calculator. When he starts the offseason, yes, we know that there's that the Lakers have to make moves. But when has that stopped LeBron James before from applying that pressure? He knows that last time he was in Cleveland for something like this was Ogowski's, uh ceremony. He was in the box seats. Now he comes down courtside, white pants, wine, coffee, water, everything to let everybody that's, know that's that they are – Line for me. That's a bold move. This is what he does. To go does coffee and wine like at the this. same time. That's a lot on your breath, a lot on your teeth. Woody Page, I'll give you the last word on this. Well, here's where I think it went from in the Lakers Nugget Series, W-H-I-N-E, wine, to being in Cleveland mm. and underneath uh, your uh, seat, you, you have yes. W-I-N-E, wine. It's nothing. He's going to stay in L.A., finish his career there. He has a home in Ohio. He's back at his home. Let's talk tonight. By the way, Boston's going to win the series. Let's just, just so someone okay, can say something yeah, about yeah. that. Thank you, George. <laughs> yeah, we got actual <laughs> games to talk about. I don't even know why we're wasting the oxygen <laughs> on, on, on the Man City courtside. Game fives tonight. Pivotal, momentum heavy, and attrition. That's what these two series are about. Pacers, Knicks. Anunobi remains out for New York. Brunson's foot remains a mystery as well. T-Wolves Nuggets. Mike Conley's now questionable with an injury for Minnesota. Woody Page, you'll be there. George Sedano, by the way, you had this series not being over. I need to give you your points. Woody, you'll be there. What decides tonight for Nuggets and T-Wolves? Well, I want to talk about both series for just a moment yeah. because the name Aaron is going to be important in both of those. Talking about Aaron Gordon, who has taken over in the last two games, and people are not even talking about it. The Timberwolves said he went all Kobe Bryant on them, missing only one shot. He's playing point guard at some points. He is setting up the pick and roll. He's playing defensive big, uh, schemes extremely well. On the other side, you've got an Aaron in Neesmith who has reinvented the game of basketball in his defense oh, against Brunson. Oh, I, so I okay. I, mean, I was wondering what <laughs> – Neesmith, Naismith, reinventing the game of – you know, what? every time you put yourself in a hole, you just come back and totally redeem yourself. I love that. I'm not sure if it actually applies to the analysis of the series, but we'll let it slide for a second. <laughs> George Sedato, number one thing you're sure of tonight in either of these games. Uh, I'm sure of that if Mike Conley is not available, that the T-Wolves are in big trouble because he's the adult in the room, basically, and particularly that has helped uh, Rudy Gobert be the guy he's been this season. But ultimately, this series changed on this, Tony. The Denver Nuggets saw the type of defense that Minnesota was playing, and they said, we can't be as deliberate and as intentional and methodical with our offense. They sped things up. They're moving the ball a lot quicker, particularly Murray and Jokic in the pick and roll. He's finding Jokic at the dotted line, basically, in the paint, and Jokic is killing them, whether it's the floater or kicking it out to an open shooter or moving the ball even further and making the hockey assist. And that's been the big difference is that Minnesota's defense can't keep up when Denver sped it up. I think Denver wins tonight. George Sedano? Is there any adjustment I do. Minnesota can make it? No, you've got Denver. Kevin Clark, one thing you're sure of tonight. Woody's completely correct in that Aaron Gordon needs a shout-out. He's been really special in that series. He's been, he's been the determining factor. But I want to talk about Jalen Brunson. What do you guys think a legacy game is? It's not when things are easy. It's when everybody thinks you're hurt, when everybody thinks mm. the team is out of gas, mm. when everybody thinks that Tyrese Halliburton, who's averaging 30 points and, and seven rebounds since the beginning of game two, is a superstar in this series. This is what legacy games are. Sports has a way of asking if you're the person you think you are. And tonight, Jalen Brunson wins against Wow, them. this sounds this like a locker room talk here. I mean, you were really working the crowd there, <laughs> Kevin Clark. You've legacy got a lot game. of faith in Johnson, uh, Brunson <laughs> bouncing back from what was, uh, of course, the Knicks had the worst game of the season, but but a sluggish jump-shooting night for him. David Dennis Jr., I turn it to you. Uh, yeah, Kevin, the, people don't think that Brunson's hurt. People don't think he's, he's struggling. He is. Like, these are things that yeah. happen. A lot of that is bar as part of that matchup that he has with Neesmith. He is 9 for 27 in the last two games since uh, while Neesmith is guarding him. And he is gas. He's having trouble getting off while uh, offensively. We saw the stats going around that he's lost two inches of his vertical in the last game. He was short-rimming a lot of shots. Mm. He looks mm. gassed out there, and the Pacers look fresh. And that's going to determine the game I think the Pacers win. Uh, as a stat boy, whoever the stat overlord was who came up with tracking Jalen Brunson's vertical on uh, jump shots. Uh, a round of applause for you.
All right, so I heard a pick for Denver in there. Uh, let's pick Knicks Pacers tonight. Around the horn, Kevin Clark. You've got New York, David Dennis Jr. Yep. You've got Indy, Woody Page in that yep. series. Pacers. And Sedano. I got the Knicks tonight. Take a break, fire cell next. Opening night, WNBA. The takeoff for some teams was chartered. Others, not yet. Some problems with the league TSA, so to speak. Announced charter flights last week, but not all teams could swing it. Those videos of comfort for some, uh, while others are cramping, led to a town hall with the commissioner. But now, to the games. Champs start at home with Banner and Ring, Aces Mercury, ESPN2 late game, Liberty Mystics, Lynx Storm, and all eyes in anticipation on Fever at Sun. That's where we'll start the debut of Caitlin Clark on the road in Connecticut, ESPN2, 7.30 Eastern. George, expectation tonight for Clark. And then, how big are you willing to go? Rookie of the year, playoffs for the Fever, first team all league, MVP, around the horn of you. Well, look. Tony, I'll start with the back end. I think she's going to have a, a great career. I don't think there's any question about that. But I want to hearken back to Diana Taurasi on Scott Van Pelt Sports Center, talking about how she's going to go up against grown women, and this won't be as easy an adjustment as people may think. So we've had her head coach, Christy Sides, talk about she's got bad habits she mm -hmm. needs her to break, mm -hmm. and she's got you know teammates that she can trust. So I'm curious to see just the adjustment right out of the gate, let alone start predicting what she's going to be down the road. You're curious, but you're – not making a prediction, it sounds like. You're not going to tell me that. We... I want to see it. Oh, you want to see I, listen, it? Listen, yeah. she's got a target. She's got a target on her back, much like LeBron when he came into the league as the chosen one and all that stuff. Guys weren't thrilled about that. So I, I think she has a very similar trajectory. But that was not an answer. Woody Page, I know you're curious. I know you'll be watching. What do you expect? Rookie of the year, all-star this season, getting the fever back into mm, playoffs okay. for the first time in seven seasons. I think those would be three major accomplishments in a rookie year. Why not happen? David Dennis Jr. I think for tonight, she breaks the record for most threes by a rookie debut, which is four. I think she can nail five of those tonight. In terms of this season, <laughs> wow. I think she's a favorite for rookie of the year, but there are some other names out there. Rakia Jackson is out there. Uh, Cameron Brink out there, both in L.A., so she's going to have, you know, some competition there. I do think going forward, that team is going to be great. The last three times WNBA teams had back-to-back uh, -to -back number one picks, they won championships within four years. I think her and Aaliyah Boston can do mm. that in the next few in years. In the next few years, but you're not willing to to give her rookie of the year. You hit pause on that, okay. And Kevin Clark, how about you? I'm giving rookie of the year. Now, first of all, according to ESPN bet, there is there are 15 times more bets for MVP on Caitlin Clark than Wilson, which is ridiculous. That's not the goal. The goal is to be rookie of the year. The only person to get okay, rookie yeah, of the yeah. year and MVP in the same year in WNBA is Candace Parker. It's a different league. By the way, Candace Parker in her debut, 34 and 12. That's not the baseline. The baseline for tonight, Brianna Stewart, who had 23 points in 2016 in her debut. Caitlin so Clark you're looking at a 23-point game, and you're giving her rookie of the year. All right. We'll move on. Yes. Aces, let's talk the chance. They're going for a three-peat, which is not something I've asked in a long time in any pro sport. But they're even money favorites to win. Woody, buy or sell three-peat for the Las Vegas Aces. Well, give me liberty or give me depth. And the Aces have depth. They have experience. They have the championship pedigree. They've got eight players that have been in the league five to 11 years, and they added another one during the offseason, and they have everybody help. Hold on, hold on a second. Wait, you said give me liberty, and then and now you're talking about well, – you lost me here, Woody. And then you're talking about the Aces. Yeah, we're yeah. talking about the Aces, yeah. You got – you think – buy or sell three-peat, Woody? Buy me liberty. All right, Bobby that's that you're going. Yeah, <laughs> David Dennis Jr. <laughs> Buying the aces, lock it in, three peat. Let's start the championship parade right now. They're bringing everybody back. Asia Wilson is the best player in the WNBA by far. What she did in the finals to clinch that series while her players were hurt is one of the greatest finals performances that you will see, and they're only getting better with three stellar rookies added to that roster too. Lock in the aces, 100%. Kevin Clark. Give me liberty or give me death because I think that the liberty win the title. Okay, so you actually home. mean it. All Brianna right. Brianna yeah. Stewart has a better <laughs> playoffs and a better <laughs> final than she last year. <laughs> Brianna Stewart shot 35% in the postseason last mm. year. That will not happen again. Mm. Had less than 20 points in two of the finals games. Right. Will not happen again. They get over so you're home. making a bet on Brianna Stewart returned to form, especially in the biggest stage, which is what did not happen last year. Sedano, buy yourself three P for the Aces. 
I'm buying it, Tony. They have the best roster to me by a wide margin. Asia Wilson is the best player, but it's not just about Asia Wilson. They have so many. They have like five, six players that can go off on any given night and give you a big scoring night. That's not even to mention the fact that they may have the best coach in the sport, too, who played at a very high level in that league as well. So to me, it's the aces by a wide margin. Woody, we're not giving you the liberty. We're not giving you the aces. We're not giving you anybody. You're going the wrong way. Real quick, one of the news element of the day. A new team name drop. David, buy or sell Golden State Valkyries. I'm absolutely buying it as a warrior name. Uh, I want Tessa Thompson, who played Valkyrie in the Thor movies, to be there at opening night to, you know, lead the celebration. Where do we come down, Clark? Thumbs up or thumbs down on Valkyrie? Huge thumbs up. I think the logo is better than the Golden State Warriors. Sedona? Uh, thumbs up. The Valkyries, I believe, used to lead the Warriors, so I think that that cool synergy makes and sense. And Woody, once again, we're not giving you Liberty or Aces yeah, or give Valkyries. Me Valerie, no. or give me uh. <laughs> Dennis Clark showdown next. That moves him up to the second highest paid quarterback in the league. It's showdown one, but buy or sell that commitment to golf. David Dennis Jr. around the year. I'm buying it as somebody who's actually been hard on golf for most of his career. You can't deny 4,500 yards, 30 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, knocking on the door of the Super Bowl. That's the type of contract you get and would not be surprised if he's knocking on the Super Bowl again the next year or two. Kevin Clark? Everybody was laughing at the Lions when they said Jared Goff was not a stopgap quarterback. He wasn't a bridge quarterback. No one is laughing now. He has changed that franchise. He's been the face of it. They chant his name in Detroit. This is money well spent. Quarterbacks like Manhattan Real Estate, they're always going up. This is the cost of doing business. I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. Both buyers. We'll move on. Never underestimate the eye of a hurricane. What a third period for the Carolina Hurricanes last night. They scored four goals. And now what was a 3-0 Rangers series lead is 3-2. Kevin, are the Rangers in trouble? Yes. They're in huge trouble because, first of all, 0-3 deficits can be climbed back from in hockey. But here's the biggest problem. Last three games, 0 for 8 on the power play. The Rangers are usually destroyers on the power play. That has gone away. 5 on 5 in their last game, they only generated 15 shots. It's an offensive disaster. Their skill players are nowhere to be found in the last couple games. They need to find it and quick because it doesn't look like they want to Man, win. are you doing a 30 for 30 documentary on this series? That's a lot of information. <laughs> Go ahead, David. Wait, let me let me get this straight. The Homer says the hurt Knicks are gonna beat the Pacers and the Liberty are gonna take out the <laughs> I didn't even put that Aces, together. You're right. But the team right. that was up three and O oh are gonna lose <laughs> now. What are we talking Ooh, about here? The out. Rangers are okay. Yes, they're struggling with the power play, but that is an anomaly. If they can get it right, which they were four for nine in the first two games, they get it right in one of these next two games, they will be fine. They are the better team after all. Mm -hmm. Kevin Clark, 30 seconds oh. of FaceTime. This week, there was some news from the golf world. It is PGA Championship week when power broker Jimmy Dunn resigned from the PGA board saying he no longer has input and there's been no progress in the PGA merger with Liv. Roy McIlroy did not get on the PGA policy board a couple weeks ago. Another sign that the uh, merger talks are stalling. I no longer care about the intricacies in the political part of this. I just want the best golfers in the world to play each other every single week. Get a deal done. Get everybody in the same room. And like this weekend with the PGA Championship, have all of the best golfers in one place except every single week. Make it happen. Put politics aside. Please, let's just get back to golf. Kevin Clark. Today's champion. Thanks for your time, David, Woody, George. Thanks for being here, Woody. Going to a 